Tonight I'm going to tell you three true stories of NASA. And the first story begins in 1948 in a working class neighborhood in Oklahoma City. It begins with a five-year-old boy running into the kitchen saying, Mom, I heard a voice coming from way up toward the sun. A voice? Yes. It said, I'm going to help people get to the moon. And she said, that's a vision. And she said, that's a vision because they were Cherokee. Their tribe was Osage. And their story is they have come from the stars to the earth. And she said, you have to work for it, JC. His Cherokee name, JC High Eagle. His name in the white world, Jerry Elliott. And working for the vision meant being good at physics and mathematics. And he did very well in high school. So 1961, J.C. Heigl, 18 years old, went to the University of Oklahoma. Life was opening, and he found many of the students didn't want him. What's the Indian kid doing here? Many of the professors did not want him. Listen, you're a fine young man. It's not your fault. It's just your people don't have what it takes to be engineers and scientists. He was humiliated, and it burned, but he had the vision, so he stuck with it. In 1966, he decided to get a master's in electrical engineering. But now there was no money. His stepfather died. His mother was working. So this young man, J.C. Heigl, went down to the police station, Norman, Oklahoma, where the university is, and said, I want to be a policeman. They gave him a test. He scored as high as anybody's ever scored. He became a full-time policeman and a deputy sheriff which meant he could take only two courses a semester. Nine in the morning, 10 was electrical engineering. He would wear his policeman's uniform to class with a loaded gun, but it was Oklahoma. <laughs> his mother called one day and said, JC, there's a telegram from the Army. Open it. You have to report to the, the draft board for your physical. Another telegram. Open it, Mom. You, you have to. You have to go to boot camp in 15 days. That means you're going to Vietnam. Call your grandfather. He called his granddad, a wise old man, at his granddad's wheat farm. Granddad at JC, listen, I'm going to boot camp in 15 days. They won't take you. No, 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 I have the piece of paper. I don't believe in paper. <laughs> they won't take you. I had a hard time getting the calf born last night. <laughs> I had to hitch the tractor up and pull the calf out. Granddad, I'm going to boot camp, 15 days. They won't take you. Let me tell you about last night. He went on and on. Chasey called his mother. He didn't listen to me, Mom. He said, they won't take me. Then he tells us a long story. Chasey, he's my dad. I am with him. Chasey was furious. The two people he trusted most didn't listen. The 15 days to boot camp were now 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 days to boot camp. He finishes electrical engineering. He walks down the corridor and there are students lined up outside the dean's office. And then on the bulletin board, NASA, interviewing today, NASA. He gets in line with his policeman uniform and says to the student, what do you got? You got to have a NASA application, government application, and your resume or he won't talk to you. There's no time for that. The line melts. Chasey steps in with his uniform on. The NASA man says, what can I do for you, officer? I want to help people get to the moon. Oh, I'm working my way through getting a master's electrical engineering. Well, I got a plane to catch. Write down your phone number, your name. Don't call us. We'll call you. The NASA man is gone. Nine days to boot camp, eight, seven, six, five days to boot camp, his mother called. There's a man, Bernie Goodwin, JC, he said he talked to you. He's from NASA. Here's his phone number. He calls Bernie Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin to J.C. Heigl. J.C., I looked into your record. You're brilliant. You're full of fire, the kind of person we need. We want you to start Monday morning, man space out of Houston. I can't. Why? The draft? Yes, sir, the draft. Well, you're a policeman. You know possession's nine-tenths of the law. You come, we possess you. <laughs> <laughs> J.C., who runs the draft there? Well, 
Mr. Goodwin, we have a colonel. Well, we have a general. Our general will talk to your colonel Monday morning. Yes, sir. He goes home, tells his mother. She says, call your granddad. Granddad, I told you they wouldn't take you. <laughs> Chasey borrows his mother car, gets his guitar, and he heads to Houston, Texas. He's thinking the creator. <sighs> the creator listened to granddad. He altered the faith for me, the creator. He gets hired Monday morning as an engineer. The weeks go by, and Chris Kraft, who becomes the famed flight director, got a big cigar, comes over one day. How do you like it here, son? I love it. But there's one thing. What's that, sir? Well, I'm used to reading books, sir, so what book should I read to know what I need to do? Son, we don't read books here, we write them. Soon enough, J.C. Heigel is writing the Agena Systems Handbook. He is in Flight Control Center for the Apollo missions. He is helping put people on the moon. And Kate said, that's it, Jack. His vision. Oh, wait, Jack, there's a coda, 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 Jack. Here's the coda. Apollo 13 is soon to lift off, and J.C. Heigl gets another piece of paper. Jury duty, downtown Houston. He goes down, nobody gets out of jury duty with Judge Singleton. Judge Singleton is listening to excuses, and one woman says, Your Honor, you can see how pregnant I am. The baby will wait. <laughs> What's your excuse? Your Honor, I am the lead retrofire officer for Apollo 13. Well, it's a retrofire officer. I calculate the re-entry angle of the command module. If it's too steep, they burn up. If it's too shallow, you're on a, they flip off, they don't come back. Hmm. I don't usually make exceptions. I'll make one in this case. If you do me a favor, yes, sir. Bring them back alive. Yes, sir. Apollo 13 lifts up. It's fine, up and up, 200,000 miles up. J.C. Heigl has finished his shift. He goes out, gets in the car, driving out, turns on the radio, there's been an accident in space. Turns in the car, runs into flight control center. Men are running around, some men are crying. Something very serious has happened to Apollo 13, but nobody's sure exactly what. In the confusion, somebody says, tell him to abort. No, J.C. says, no. He's afraid if they abort and the motor is damaged, they won't make the U-turn in the command module. He says, no, send them around the moon. He wants to use the gravity of the moon to help slingshot them back to Earth. So Jack, J.C. Heigl, helps people get to the moon, helps them get back. 